would is Christina available um, with audio to pray? Victoria, would you like to lead in prayer? I'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity we have, we have to come together um, in fellowship. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins and give me courage to speak present truth. Help me to remain teachable and please bless this study. May we come to see that we are people who are all one and are equal in your perspective. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Okay, let me share my screen or share screen. Okay. Okay. Hello, everyone. My presentation is entitled Neither Less Than Nor Greater Than But Equal. And the theme of this study is relationships. This is an interactive study, and I encourage any and all comments, questions, and feedback. As I say, though I'm in the teacher spot, I'm also a student learning and seeking greater understanding. Um, and quite frankly, this study is a bit beyond me. It's a bit deep and there are so many thoughts my mind has been grappling with as I put this study together. So with much input and participation, I hope it would be enlightening for all of us. With that said, this may be a sensitive discourse for some, if not all of us as abuse is defined and discussed. That is not the intent of the study, but as it may be the case, I want us to create a safe space for all of us to participate and contribute to the discussion openly and freely. May the information shared be a timely blessing for all of us. And also because I can't see the chat very well um, as I'm presenting, um, I would appreciate if you have any comments to speak up or if someone can read from the chat. Okay, so what does God desire? God desires a counterpart. God created humans for the, this very purpose, that humans would learn of and grow with God and become one. God's equal, God's counterpart. How does God teach us about him? Anybody want to answer? There are relationships with other people? <laughs> yes. Oh, and parables, yeah, that's a good one. Parables. Yes. Everything is, so, sorry, I have to um, fix this on my screen real quick. Okay. Uh oh, what's going on? There you go. So, what is a parable? A parable can be a story, a character, basically anything and everything we are familiar with and know about that can be used to teach us about something that we aren't familiar with and we don't know about. In other words, something visible that can teach us about the invisible or something natural that can teach us about the spiritual. And what is a very good parable God created for us to know and understand him? Sister Christine, you wanna answer? Right, to our, our relationships with each other. Yes, he created human beings, so we are, a very good parable, you know, ourselves and each other. So what number one key avenue of our humanity does God use to teach us about divinity? And that is, yes, our relationships. 
Our interactions and experiences with each other teach us more about one another, ourselves, and God. Our humanity teaches us, teaches us about God's divinity, and it is through our relationships and individual interactions that we learn more about God and the different facets of his character. So what are the five key relationships? Husband and wife, spouse. Yes. Oh, but it's not an order. I don't have an order, but that is that is one of them. Parent and child. Friends. Friends, yes. And siblings. And we have one last one. The boss and employee. And marriage. Yeah. So I believe I thought um Oh Phil must have said that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yes, these are the five key relationships. Parent, child, siblings, friendship, boss, employee, and marriage. So what makes the difference in all relationships? Is it age? Education. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. What did you say, Sister Susan? Uh, well, when you asked the question and you paused, I thought you wanted us to give an answer. I, I was saying communication. Okay. Here, what was your question again? I thought it was, what was the key component in relationships? Did I hear wrong? Yeah, what is the, sorry. What is the difference in all relationships? What is, what makes the difference in all relationships? And okay. so if we look in parent child or any relationship, is it a person's age? No, there's a point that I'm trying to make here. Is it ethnicity, race, or nationality? No. Is it looks, talents, abilities? No. And going back, I actually wanna point out that these two women right here are sisters. They're actually twins. And um, they're, hold on. Um, Yes, that they're actually twins and um, they have, uh, their dad is white and their mom is half Jamaican. So it's, um, you know, I just wanna show that we're, I'm just making a point there and, and noting that. So is it status or popularity that makes the difference in relationships? No. Is it sex or gender that makes the difference in relationships? No. So what makes the difference? These are all people. They are all the same and they are different. Neither is less than or greater than, but equal. They all fall under the same group of creation as human beings. The only true difference is the bond and boundaries that set the stage for how they are to treat one another or how they relate to the other. That does not and should not depend upon the external, what we can see but simply the nature of the relationship or the type of relationship it is. So the only true difference is the bond and boundaries and relationships. And I'll further explain. Um, for example, a friend will not interact or bond the same way she would with her mom. It's not because of, of an age difference or a difference in, of nationality, but simply because of the nature of the relationship is different. The type of bond they share is different. The friend, for instance, will share things and experiences with her friend that she wouldn't share with her mom and vice versa. Does that, that make sense? That, and, and, and this is just one example. So that remains true for multiple bonds under the same type of relationship. So if a, a friend, will not interact the same way she would with another friend. It's just that the boundaries and the bonds in those relationships are different. That's what makes the relationship truly different, not someone's external appearance or you know anything that we can see um, about a person. Is that, does that make sense? Yes. To me, it's still uh, a communication because depending on the, the bond, or the relationship that you have, you'll open up differently right. to that person. You, yeah. Exactly, that, that is within bonds and boundaries. What you communicate is based on the boundaries in that relationship. 
You get what I'm saying? You place, like you won't share things, communicate things with people about yourself. Um, with, with, for example, you wouldn't share, maybe not share things with Sister Elaine that you would share with um, Sister Adriana, for instance, because the relationship is different. What you um, both share, the experiences that you have together are different. Does that make sense? Yes, and, yes. and the trust you develop right. with people, yeah. So how we bond depends upon the boundaries we set and the boundaries we set tailors the bond we share. So what is a bond? Anyone? It's here. Connection. Yeah, a connection. It's a close connection between two or more things um, or a close connection joining two or more people, a relationship between people or groups based on shared feelings, interests, or experiences. And um, what is that? Sorry. There, there was a bond of under, oh, so that's just an example of a bond. So the bond is understanding, the understanding. Um, so what is a boundary? A line of limitation. Right, yes, a line that marks the limits of an area, a dividing line, a limit of a subject or a sphere of activity. Um, so let me just be clear. So all summed up, a bond is basically a close connection between two uh, or more things or people that is based on shared feelings, interests, or experiences. And a boundary is what makes the is what marks the limits of how close the connection is. It marks the level or the depth of the relationship, how close one gets to the other physically, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. So I have a link here, and I think this is very important um, that we go over this. So let me know if we can see the link as. Um, once it's opened. Um, I don't think I have to, I'm not sure if it will open with me in here. So let me know. Can you see the screen? No, no, we can't. Okay. No, just see blank. All right, let me exit. Stop share. So um, I'm going to zoom up here. So this is a short um, document that talks about healthy boundaries. But within this document, it is explaining what boundaries are. And um, it's really important that we understand what healthy boundaries are in relationships. Um, and so hold on, let me. Maybe this is, I don't know how to, I think that's, maybe that, is that too small? Here, let's. No, it looks good. Okay, because I can't fit it on the whole page, but, um, and I don't know how to get that part off. But we're just. Little, it could be a little smaller because it's cut off on the end. Yeah. On, on the left-hand side. All right. Yeah. So this is a document about healthy boundaries and we're going to read through it um, just to get a better understanding because this explains it very well about boundaries. Okay, so I'm going to read the entire document. An intimate relationship is one in which neither party silences, sacrifices, or portrays the self and each, um, and each party expresses strengths and vulnerability, weaknesses, and competence in a balanced way. That's just a quote. Mm. Setting boundaries is essential if we want to be both physically and emotionally healthy. Creating healthy boundaries is empowering. By recognizing the need to set and enforce limits, you protect your self-esteem, maintain self-respect, and enjoy healthy relationships. Unhealthy boundaries cause emotional pain that can lead to dependency, depression, anxiety, and even stress-induced physical illness. A lack of boundaries is like leaving the door to your home unlocked 
anyone, including an unwelcome guest, can enter at will. On the other hand, having too rigid boundaries can lead to isolation, like living in a locked up castle surrounded by a moat. No one can get in and you can't get out. So what are boundaries? Boundaries are guidelines, rules, or limits that a person creates to identify for themselves what are reasonable, safe, and permissible ways for other people to behave around them and how they will respond when someone steps outside those limits. The easiest way to think about a boundary is a, pro is a property line. We all have seen no trespassing signs, which send a clear message that if you violate that boundary, there will be a consequence. This type of boundary is easy to picture and understand because you can see the sign and the border it protects. Personal boundaries can be harder to define because the lines are invisible, can change, and are unique to each individual. Personal boundaries, just like the no trespassing sign, Define where you end and others begin and are determined by the amount of physical and emotional space you allow, excuse me, you allow between yourself and others. Personal boundaries help you decide what types of communication, behavior, and interaction are acceptable. So why is it important to set boundaries? To practice self-care and self-respect to communicate your needs in a relationship, to make time and space for positive interactions, to set limits in a relationship in a way that is healthy. If you have any comments or questions, um, please feel free to speak up. You wanna share, um, please feel free to do so. Physical boundaries. Physical boundaries provide a barrier between you and intruding and intruding sorry, and an intruding force, like a Band-Aid protects a wound from bacteria. Physical boundaries include your body, sense of personal space, sexual orientation, and privacy. These boundaries are expressed through clothing, shelter, noise tolerance, verbal instruction, and body language. An example of physical boundary violation, a closed talker. Your immediate and automatic re reaction is to step back in order to reset your personal space. By doing this, you send a nonverbal message that when this person stands so close, you feel an invasion of your personal space. If the person continues to move closer, you might verbally protect your boundary by telling him or her to stop crowding you. Other examples of physical boundary invasions are inappropriate touching, such as unwanted sexual advances, looking through others' personal files and emails, not allowing others their personal space, barging into your boss's office without knocking. Emotional and in intellectual boundaries. These boundaries protect your sense of self-esteem and ability to separate your feelings from others. When you have weak emotion, emotional boundaries, it's like getting caught in the midst of a hurricane with no protection. You expose yourself to being greatly affected by others' words, thoughts, and actions, and end up feeling bruised, wounded, and battered. These include beliefs, behaviors, choices, sense of responsibility, and your ability to imitate, uh, imitate, uh, intimate with others. Examples of emotional and intellectual boundaries invasions are not knowing how to separate your feelings from your partners and allowing his or her mood to dictate your level of happiness or sadness, aka codependency, sacrificing your plans, dreams, and goals in order to please others, not taking responsibility for yourself and blaming others for your problems. Barriers to boundary setting. It seems obvious that no one would want his or her boundaries violated. So why do we allow it? Why do we not enforce or uphold our boundaries? Fear of rejection and ultimately abandonment, fear of confrontation, guilt. We were taught, we were not taught healthy boundaries. Um, so this is just a safety concern. If you are dealing with someone who is physically dangerous or threatening to you, it may not be safe to attempt to see explicit, explicit boundaries with them. 
Um, if you are in this situation, it can be helpful to work with a counselor, therapist, or advocate to create a safety plan and boundary setting may be a part of this. So um, assess the current state of your boundaries. Healthy boundaries allow you to have high self-esteem and self-respect, share personal information gradually in a mutually sharing and trusted relationship, protect physical and emotional space from intrusion, have an equal partnership where responsibility and power are shared, be assertive, confidently and truthfully say yes or no, and be okay when others say no to you. Separate your needs, thoughts, feelings, and desires from others. Recognize that your boundaries and needs are different from others. Empower yourself to make healthy choices and take responsibility for yourself. Um, so uh, examples of unhealthy boundaries, sharing too much um, too soon, or at the other end of the spectrum, closing yourself off and not expressing your needs and wants. Feeling responsible for others' happiness. Inability to say no for fear of rejection or abandonment. Weak sense of your own identity. You base how you feel about yourself on how others treat you. Disempowerment. You allow others to make decisions for you. Consequently, you feel powerless and do not take responsibility for your own life. Um, so these are tips, but I don't think I will read those tips. Um, but I do um, for the sake, because I'm not sure if many of us have even come to a place where we have talked about boundaries or had that, um, you know, brought to us to understand. Um, and you would think, never mind, I won't say that. Um, but I know that um, some of us grow up not knowing about boundaries and boundaries are important because that is what teaches others how you want to be treated and also helps you to develop and understand how you would like to be treated. So um, I do wanna say this, at first you will probably feel selfish, guilty or embarrassed when you set a boundary. Do it, do it anyway and remind yourself you have a right to self-care. Setting boundaries takes practice and determination. Do not let anxiety, fear, or guilt prevent you from taking care of yourself. And please do not take this as some self-help guidance. I'm just sharing this information um, to help us better understanding the, the points that I'm bringing to play here. And boundaries in relationships is important to understand. Um, when you feel anger or resentment or find yourself whining or complaining, you probably need to set a boundary. Listen to yourself, determine what you need to do or say, then communicate assertively. And learning to set healthy boundaries takes time. It is a process. Set them in your own time frame, not when someone else tells you. Um, and develop support systems of people who respect your right to set boundaries. Eliminate toxic persons from your life, those who want to manipulate, abuse, and control you. Okay, so I will stop share here and go back. Um, okay. So we're here. Sorry. Um, okay. So let me just make sure this is where I want to start. Uh, sorry. Um, Oh, sorry. Ah, sorry, I'm just all over the place here. Um, so yes, this is where I was. So this is, this is where I want to um, start. Okay, so boundaries give us give others a manual on how you expect to be treated and what behaviors you will allow to be part of your life. If you don't set boundaries, people won't know how to act around you, and you will be left feeling disrespected. The means by which boundaries, and I just want to let you know that things that are in quotation marks are not my words. They are quotes. Things that are not in quotation marks are my words. The means by which boundaries are set is through communication. Sister Susan, thank you for mentioning communication. Informing others how we expect to be treated and how we would not expect to be treated and agreeing to respect theirs. 
So um, this is another one document real quick that I want us to um, also look at. Um, and it's on boundaries. Uh, here. And I didn't stop share. So let me go back. Okay, so here we are. And um, this is also um, a site that's talking about healthy boundaries and um, it provides good uh, research um, behind boundary settings. Um, and if you want to check more into it, um, I don't recommend, you know, looking through this and, you know, um, and all of that, but I do believe that this is providing help, um, good information on boundaries, if that makes sense. So what are boundaries? And I know we just went over boundaries, but this gives us information about boundaries that the other um, document didn't provide. And sorry, this is a lot, a lot of reading right here, but I think it's important to set place what we're going to be discussing. So personal boundaries are the limits you decide work for you on how people can treat you how they can behave around you and what they can expect from you. So, um, do we all understand why we need boundaries? Was that clarified in that previous doc uh, document? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. So I won't go over that, but I do wanna talk, uh, read over here where it talks about 12 signs that you lack, bound lack boundaries. And this is important because I know that I was one who also needed to understand um, boundaries and the importance of them, especially when it comes to knowing how I would like to be treated and how to treat other people. So um, if you lack boundaries, um, I'll try to skim through some of it, but I just wanted to want us to have a sense of what it's like to like ba lack boundaries. Um, so your relationships tend to be difficult or dramatic. The less boundaries you set, the more you give others a signal that you don't know how to take care of yourself. This leaves you open to attracting will people who want to control you. At some point, you might get so frustrated, this table turns and you secretly begin to control the other person. In other words, you're constantly in codependent relationships and friendships that lack an equal exchange of give and take. Um, and if you have any comments or would like to share anything to add, please feel free to do. Um, the worst case scenario for not setting boundaries within relationships is ending up on the receiving end. Um, so I actually, I'm gonna skip that part for a minute. Uh, you can find decisions making a real challenge. Without healthy boundaries, you can end up spending so much of your life doing what others want you to, uh, sorry, others want that you lose a sense of self. This means that you often don't know what you do, what you do or don't want. Faced with a decision, you blank. So you really, really hate to let other people down. That's another lack of boundaries. So people without boundaries tend to go along with other people's plans or worries about letting other people down to the extent that they just say yes. Perhaps you've been called a people pleaser. Two words, guilt and anxiety. If you lack boundaries and ever dare say yes, you suffer from ongoing guilt and fear. You probably feel responsible if others aren't happy, make people with boundary issues feel guilty for the smallest things too, like taking the last piece of cake or asking someone to move along a bench so, so you can sit too. Um, and let's, I don't, I don't know if I want to read everyone, but, um, if that's okay, I guess I will just read. Um, you are often tired for no apparent reason, always doing what other, others want means you leave, you are left to cram your own life in the time left over, which is exhausting, but never identifying and pursuing your own dreams in life can also cause a sense of fatigue as it can cause mild depression. Setting boundaries, on the other hand, tends to be energizing. Your radar is off when it comes to sharing. So lacking personal boundaries can lead to oversharing private details of your life with people you just met. 
leaving you open to hurt and manipulation. Conversely, it can lead to not sharing enough with those who are trying to get close to you because you don't know how to share your needs and wants and might suffer intimacy issues. You're constantly the victim of situations. If you have no boundaries, you might tend to feel hard done because by others because, uh, sorry, but mm, let me read that again. If you have no boundaries, you might tend to feel hard done by because others will take advantage of you in both obvious and subtle ways. You might always feel overlooked or blamed at work, in your family, and in your social circles. You might even be the sort of person that things always that things always seem to go wrong for. You are a tiny bit annoyed most of the time. So if you often feel slightly annoyed with people, edgy or a bit off, it can be because you're going against your own values and desires nonstop. This feeling can be supported by always feeling worried what others think and feeling guilty for the things you secretly want. You secretly feel that others don't show you respect. So boundaries give others a manual on how you expect to be treated and what behavior you will allow to be a part of your life. If you don't set boundaries, people won't know how to act around you and you will be left feeling disrespected. The other side of the coin is that without your own boundaries, you are less likely to recognize those of others and might unwittingly be disrespecting them. You might be passive aggressive. If you always say no when you secretly want to say yes, you will find that you later feel upset and disempowered. And this often leads to trying to manipulate back the energy and empower you lost by nagging the other person or complaining or even pushing them in little ways. In other words, a bad cause of passive aggression. You might also blame others all the time, which is a way of not facing up to the fact that really you didn't set a boundary and that you are the one who is responsible for your life. You often wonder why you often wonder who you really are. Even if you don't realize it, you are probably often doing what others want instead of what you want and basing your opinion of yourself on what others think of you. After many years of this, and if it is a behavior you learn from a parent, it could even be a lifetime. It, it's not uncommon to have, a limited, to have a limited or too fluid sense of self. It's likely that you are unclear on your purpose in life or perhaps struggle to set goals. You might even have an identity crisis. And the last, your secret fears is of being rejected or abandoned. Lacking boundaries, can, be, can often be traced back to a childhood where you took on the message that you uh, that to not do what others want you to do results in being rejected or abandoned. As a child, attention and love are necessary to your personal growth. So back then, it might have worked uh, to not set boundaries and do what you were told in order to get what love you could. Of course, as an adult, Sorry. Uh, uh, no. Sorry, my thing jumped. Um, so, of course, as an adult, this can mean you have a backward belief in your unconscious that um, to be boundaryless will lead to love. Instead, it tends to lead to difficult relationships and loneliness. So um, boundaries are not something that makes you unhappy. So many of us are scared to set boundaries, worried we won't be liked and our life will be miserable. The reverse tends to be true. If you set boundaries, you then attract people who are willing to respect you and want good things for you. So I also want us to come away knowing that boundaries are good. Boundaries are not to limit your joy, but to protect your joy. Your relationships get better and you actually enjoy the things you choose to do because they match your values. Boundaries are not set in stone. As you learn more of who you are and experience personal lessons in life, you will change. So too will your boundaries. And boundaries are not about right or wrong. Your personal healthy boundaries are based on your own value system and perspective. 
and might be totally different than someone else's. That also means that you don't have to explain or defend your boundaries. You just need to set them. If someone doesn't want to abide by them or refuses to accept them, then question if you really need that person in your life anymore. So I will stop there. Um, uh, stop share. Yeah, and so we're share screen back to my here. So are there any comments about boundaries? So I um, let me go back. Just that we need to remember not only are our boundaries that, but when we're dealing with other people that they may have their own boundaries and that we need to respect those and not take it personally, but respect those boundaries. Right, right. And just to repeat, the means by which boundaries are set is through communication, informing others how we expect to be treated and how we would expect to be treated. And in that, also agreeing to respect other people's. So, um, and I, also, I also think that when it, it comes to who we are and what we're preparing to do, um, I think there would be a difference in what we might call our boundaries because when we're nothing, you, you, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We have to come to where we're right. with great humility and, and we see ourselves as nothing. And so it, it, those boundaries for our own selves, but that may be something we still have to learn as well. But those boundaries for our own selves would be more about um, us instead of about them. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, so really understanding um, that, like when we're reaching out to other people, learning how to work with them and, and being able to read and understand their boundaries and uh, how to work with them, kind of how to meet them where, where they're at. Right. Well. Right. Right, right. And Jesus, Jesus had his own boundaries, you know, also when, uh, when he got over, you know, not overwhelmed, but um, when he needed time to, 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 to reflect and meditate, he went off on his own. So he had his boundaries. Yeah. Right. So thank recharged. You. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Those boundaries just, that he would have would be so that he, yes, recharged. So could he, could re yeah. better serve. Correct. Exactly. Correct. And that's, um, thank you for touching on that. Um, so boundaries are good for us to have. And so it's important to understand what healthy boundaries are and, um, you know, that, um, and to know that it's okay. And um, I like this quote because it says, the only people who get upset about you setting boundaries are the ones who are benefiting from you having none. Um, so it is important for us to have um, boundaries and relationships because that's, that's really good. You should you should repeat that one quote. You did it so fast. That's Would you mind really saying that one quote. more time? That was really good. We should post that. That is an excellent quote. The only that one right there. Yes. About setting boundaries are the ones who were benefiting benefiting from you having none so we want to understand that in relationships is about how we treat each other right how we interact and how we relate to one another and so each of us need a we can't have no boundaries and we can't have like too strict boundaries right it has to be balanced it has to be mutual so we want to keep this in um um in our minds because it's about respecting ourselves and respecting each other right and if you don't have boundaries, how can you expect, how would you react to someone who does? Or how can you expect, um, you know, be, yeah, behave around someone who does? So, um, you know, and vice versa is, is really important um, because it, it's basically that limit that shows how we want to be treated and, and, how, and the limit that someone else has and how they would like to be treated, you know? And it's respecting those boundaries and those relationships, right? And each relationship is different. The way you bond with someone else is not the way you would bond with another friend or you know, a family member. It's all different. Your relationships are different. What you share in those relationships is based upon what boundaries you have in those relationships, how you interact, what you do, what you say. you know. And it's respecting those boundaries that keeps the relationship going 
right? Because once we're gonna get into that, when we're discussing what it means to cross boundaries, okay? So this is um, a quote from Wikipedia about personal boundaries. I'm just gonna read the first um, portion of it. It is a simple, you know, um, because there's boundaries and then as we see, there's personal boundaries. So personal boundaries are guidelines, rules, or limits that, and so it sounds a bit repetitive, but hopefully we come away with just remembering what uh, um, boundaries are and why they're important. So personal boundaries are guidelines, rules, or limits that a person creates to identify reasonable, safe, and permissible ways for other people to have uh, towards them and how they will respond when someone passes those limits. They are built out of a mix of conclusions, beliefs, opinions, attitudes, past experience, experiences, and social learning. This concept or life skill has been widely referenced in self-help books, so we know that this is kind of this is discussed um, and used in counseling professions since the mid 1980s. So this concept of personal boundaries. Um, has been used since the mid 1980s. So that gives us a uh, history of how this concept of personal boundaries and boundaries uh, that people have or set um, has um, began the study of it, the history of it a little bit. So I'm not gonna read this part. I'm just gonna keep going. So what do personal boundaries create? Limits to how one likes to be treated and, does, and doesn't want or like to be treated. At any point of violation of the limit set and there is no consent, a boundary has been crossed. Uh, sorry, here we go. This shows a lack of respect and is manifested in a form of abuse. And so we can simply define equality as, res as respect and inequality as disrespect. I know that Elder Parminder had this on the board of e equality meaning respect, you know, um, how respect and love. And um, so the opposite would be inequality meaning disrespect in simple terms, in, in simple terms. So when boundaries are kept and are respected, we are cultivating the spirit of equality and are treating each other as equals. And oppositely, when crossing and disrespecting boundaries, we are cultivating the spirit of inequality and are treating each other as not equals and abuse is present. And I'm gonna help us to understand that as we go along. So what is abuse? Abuse is the improper. This is just um, a Wikipedia um, quick search of abuse. Is the improper usage or treatment of a thing or person often to unfairly or improperly gain benefit. Abuse can come in many forms, such as physical or verbal maltreatment, injury, assault, violation, rape, unjust practices, crimes, or other types of aggression. To these descriptions, one can also add the Kantian, um, Kantian notion of the wrongness of using another human being as means to an end rather than ends to a means. Um, sorry, did I say that right? Uh, sorry, rather than as ends in themselves. Um, so I did attach a hyperlink to the Kantian notion if anybody wants more information on that. And by right clicking on it, it will open a page to a crash course um, YouTube video explaining more in depth on that um, theory, um, if you want more information on that. But some sources describe abuse as socially constructed, which means there may be more or less recognition of the suffering of a victim at different times in societies. So another definition of abuse, um, which I found, sorry, which I found on um, a credible source, um, um, and I'm just going safeguarding, safeguarding Somerset. Um, but I, the definition that they gave is really a good one. 
So abuse is when someone causes us harm or distress. It can take many forms ranging from disrespect to causing someone physical or mental pain. It can occur in someone's home, a care home, hospital, or public place. Often the people who commit abuse are taking advantage of a special relationship. They may be a family member, friend, or a paid care, uh, carer who we expect to trust. Sometimes abuse isn't intentional, but happens because someone doesn't have the skills or support needed to care for someone. So that is talking about in regards of institute, just um, hospital settings, in-home care, but also just like um, if you're doing, um, did I say in-home care? But yeah, so, but that is just in general too, not just in um, like a facility setting or when you're caring for somebody, like if you have a job in um, nursing or um, in home care. That doesn't make the impact of it any less, but it can help to understand how it happened. So I hope that was clear, because I... Abuse is simply when there is a boundary that is crossed. Someone clearly communicates how they would like to be treated and it is dismissed ignored or warped as something unimportant or trivial. Someone says, no, stop, I don't like that, that is not okay, and another disregards by saying yes and continuing to do what that person was told not to do. This is a form of disrespect, a form of abuse. This includes if a person does not have the soundness of mind to say no, and or is being manipulated or forced into doing something they wouldn't want or don't want to do and or shouldn't be doing. In other words, without an agreed upon consent between the individuals involved, it is considered abuse. A person's mind can change, boundaries can change, but if those individuals do not come to an agreement and one attempts to force or manipulate the other, whether successful or not, it is considered abuse. This is why relationships takes work and it is good to take the time to get to know and understand each other, reason together and respect each other's decision. Otherwise, abuse, fights and separation will inevitably occur. So I have, I think this is my last one in which I'm going to um, read from a document. And this is gonna give us more details about the types of abuse. So um, I do want to, I have to get out of here. Prepares that um, what we are about to uh, read and see is a bit um, detailed and raw. So, um, Please be mindful that it is sensitive, a sensitive issue. And I st forgot to stop. Okay. Um, okay. So types of abuse and examples. There are different types of abuse that perpetrators use against their victims. Most abuse will overlap. Types of abuse include physical, sexual, psychological, verbal, emotional, and mental, um, financial, and spiritual. Physical. Physical abuse is the use of physical force against someone in a way that injures or endangers that person. Domestic abuse rarely starts at physical assault. Perpetrators will use, and I wanted to note that I forgot to say, um, is that I want us to be mindful of people as a whole. Abuse is abuse, and it can be committed by any person in any variant of a relationship. So I want us to be mindful of that, okay? And so um, perpetrators will use physical abuse when they feel they are being challenged. Examples of physical abuse include punching, hitting, spitting, kicking, strangling, restraining, burning, scalding, stabbing, 
head butting, biting, nipping, squeezing, shoving, suffocating, pushing, grabbing, choking, throwing, breaking bones, using weapons, poisoning, throwing things, force feeding, attempts to kill, reckless driving, pulling hair, murder, and sexual abuse. Any situation in which someone is forced to participate in and to participate in unwanted, unsafe, or degrading sexual activity, even when it's with a partner, the person is also having consensual sex. Um, the person is also having consensual sex is sexual abuse. Examples of sexual abuse include rape, forced penetration sexual assault, um, sexual assault using objects, sex toys, broken glass, bottles, etc. Forcing sex in ways that hurt or following a physical beating, forcing sex with others, forcing sex in front of others, making her watch or mimic pornography, unwanted, unwanted fondling, videoing, photographing her doing sexual acts, pinching or biting breasts and buttocks, name calling uh, such as frigid or whore, criticizing her sexu sexuality, forcing her to strip or forcefully stripping her, sadistically sexual acts, forcing her into prostitution, withholding sex and or affection, making sex conditional on her behavior, minimizing or denying her feelings about sex or sexual preferences, forcing or coercing her to act out fantasies she is not comfortable with. Psychological violence. Psychological includes verbal, emotional, and mental abuse. The abuse can use um, the abuse can use both verbal and nonverbal communication. The impact of physical psychological abuse is often deeper and longer lasting than physical abuse. Examples of this kind of abuse include name calling, constant insults, shaming and humiliating her in public with put downs, disguising as disguised as jokes, nasty, hurtful sarcasm only engaging in conversation with her when he decides the time is right, silences and sulking for days, blocking and diverting her if she wants to say something, he decides what subjects can and cannot be discussed, trivializing and, minimal, and minimizing anything she says and making it seem in, insignificant, twisting and turning every situation around so it's always her fault, screaming and shouting at her in private or uh, in private or public criticism or constantly correcting everything she says or does refusing to listen to anything she has to say not allowing her to voice her opinion or have an opinion of her own denial pretending he has said or done something uh, sorry, he hasn't said or done something, laughing or making fun of her inappropriately, leaving nasty messages, texts, voicemail, Facebook, Twitter, etc., accusing her of unfaithfulness, not trying hard enough or purposely doing something to annoy, blaming her for his failures or other forms of abuse. Emotional and mental. Emotional and mental abuse is often subtle. And in some cases, victims don't recognize they are being abused. This kind of abuse will wear victims down, often over a long period of time, until they take responsibility of their abuser's actions and behavior towards them or simply accept it. Financial. In addition to hurting victims emotionally and physically, perpetrators may also hurt them financially. Examples of economic or financial abuse include, excuse me, sorry. Oh, 
controlling all the finances, not allowing her to see any bank statements, bills, or any financial transactions, putting all the bills in her name, then not paying them, destroying her credit or chance to set up her own bank account if she leaves, withholding money or credit cards, not allowing her to have her own bank account, not paying bills and spending the money on himself, alcohol, glam gambling, trips out, treats for himself, giving her an allowance which is not sufficient to buy what she needs, making her account for every, every penny she spends and expecting um, all receipts, stealing or selling her possessions or taking money, exploiting her assets for his personal gain, preventing her from working or choosing her own career, making her work from home so he can help, so he can uh, keep an eye on her, sabotaging her job, making her miss work, calling constantly, making her beg for money, setting up financial loans, credit cards, hire purchase, um, agreements by forging her signature or making her sign the paperwork, the perpetrator refusing to work or contribute to the financial running of the family and house. And so, spiritual. Spiritual abuse can be hard to detect especially if you are not knowledgeable in that particular religion, culture, beliefs, and traditions. Examples of this include using her religious or spiritual beliefs to manipulate her, preventing her from pra practicing her religious or spiritual beliefs, ridiculing her religious or spiritual beliefs, forcing the children to be brought up in a faith that mom has not agreed to, threats to harm or kill in the, in the name of honor, using religious teachings or cultural traditions as an excuse for violence, denying access to ceremonies, places of worship, land or family, forcing her to do things against her beliefs, forced marriage, female genital um, mutilation, Um, and so that is um, in-depth um, picture of what abuse looks like. And um, for all of you who have been in abusive relationships, um, you know, I send hugs to you. And I ask that we would all have empathy and really come to a place to understand what abuse is, because that truly is the issue. Okay. And then I want to take us to one last link, which is um, Wikipedia um, to give us titles um, that go beyond just um, abuse that happens in relationships. So, um, can you see the screen, the new screen? Um, I cannot. No. All right, I think. Okay, so this is just a simple search of abuse. Um, and I just want to read out some of the other types of abuse there is. So um, forgive me because some words I have problem pronouncing and I'm not going to um, define them. You can do that if you like, It'll, it's in the notes um, there, but I just want to mention the names so that we have a knowledge of, you know, things that fall under abuse. Um, so, but if there is one that you hear and you're like, what is that? Please feel free to speak up and I will read what it says. 
Okay. So, um, and some of them I won't, I will skip over um, because it's, it's um, what you call it, a categorizing everything that falls under abuse. And I, there's some that I will like allow you to um, review for yourself. So, um, abuse of discretion, abuse of dominance, um, abuse of information, ab abuse of power, abuse of process. Remember, we're talking about relationships. So we're talking about different ways people interact with each other. Um, so we have those five types of relationships, five key relationships. Um, abuse of process, abuse of rank, um, abuse, um, abuse of trust, abusive supervision, academic abuse, um, adolescent abuse, adult abuse, animal abuse, antisocial behavior, bullying, character assassination, child abuse, parental abuse of children, child sexual abuse, child on child sexual abuse, church abuse, civil rights abuse, um, clerical abuse, cyber abuse or cyber bullying, dating abuse or dating violence, defamation, detainee abuse, disability abuse, discriminatory abuse, doctor abuse, domestic abuse or domestic violence, economic abuse, elder abuse, emotional abuse, employee abuse, false accusations, financial abuse, flag abuse, gaming the system, gaslighting, gay abuse or gay bashing, group psychological abuse, harassment, hate crimes, hazing, human rights abuse, humiliation, incivility, institutional abuse, insult, intimidation, legal abuse, lesbian abuse, malpractice, market abuse, material abuse, medical abuse, mental abuse, mind abuse or mind control, misconduct, mobbing, narcissistic abuse, neglect, negligence, uh, nurse abuse or nursing abuse, online abuse, parental abuse by children, passive aggressive behavior, parent, uh, patient abuse, peer abuse, persecution, personal abuse or personal attacks, physical abuse, police abuse, torture, prejudice, um, prison abuse or prisoner abuse, professional abuse, psychological abuse, racial abuse, um, rat, I think that's ragging, rape, relational aggression, religious abuse, resident abuse, rudeness, um, school bullying, set, uh, sectarian abuse, self abuse, sexual abuse, sexual bullying, sibling abuse, smear, um, smear campaign, societal abuse, spiritual abuse, spousal abuse, stalking, um, surveillance abuse, taunting, teacher abuse, teasing, telephone abuse, terrorism, transgender abuse or trans bashing, um, umpire abuse, verbal abuse or verbal attacks, um, whispering campaign, uh, workplace abuse or workplace bullying. Um, so I just wanted to read those names out there because those are also um, connected with types of abuse. Okay. And so are there any questions about abuse or any comments about abuse? Well, you helped some, <clears throat> I'm 
me to <laughs> put uh well, I don't know how to word it, put a name on what my Slavic friend was doing to me for quite some time until finally it ended. And I, you know, never felt any reason to contact her again because <clears throat> she was the kind of person who would never change. <laughs> and I was enabling, I don't know if the word is enabling, you used a word earlier in your presentation, it had to do with uh, codependency and such, where we allow people to continue to do these things to us, sometimes for years or decades, <clears throat> until finally we get too old, we're too sick to handle it, and it just, you know, it, it just ends of its own accord. But yeah, it's, it was abuse, pure and simple. <laughs> you know, however much of it had to do with her nationality or her upbringing, it was still pure and simply abuse. Mm -hmm. and, and, I missed, and I haven't missed it one bit <laughs> since it ended. You bring up so. a really good point that some people are in abusive relationships and don't even know it. Um, yeah, you think it's a friendship, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting. It kind of sounds like a oxymoron, like, um, or just ironic, you know? But there's people who are in abusive relationships and don't know it. And a part of that, as we saw, is, you know, really dealing with the boundaries you have. Do you have healthy boundaries or do you have um, unhealthy boundaries? And the thing is that, the sad thing is, is that a lot of people weren't taught about boundaries. They don't even know what boundaries are, what's appropriate yeah. and, what's, and what's inappropriate behavior and how you treat people and how you treat yourself. And, and I, I can imagine that, you know, these are, these, this is such a comprehensive study on the human condition. Thank you so much, Victoria, because oftentimes this is never taught to us. No one taught us this in school. We never got taught this in, at home. Our parents never shared this, hot. but yet we're in human relationships every day of our lives. And what happens is when we don't understand why this is happening, we start to think that that, that, that something wrong with us, you know, because why does this happen, you know? And it is us because we don't understand what's going on. So you're kind of in a fog and abuse is a two way street because you can be abused and then you can, uh, you can allow it to be, you, you can allow yourself to be abused. But yet at the same time, oftentimes we're not taught or we are taught that if you exert some sort of you know, like, could you please not do that? Or maybe, you know, I, yeah, or th we're not taught that that's okay. You can yeah. say, please don't in, you know, you're, you're, you're crowding my space. Okay. You're, this is my pro personal space here. You're not taught, you're taught that that might be a rude thing to say, but actually that's probably the best thing to say, because if you tell mm -hmm. people that, then they go, Oh, okay. Well now we know we can't, right. we, there's this boundary that she has and, you know, we really like her. So we want to be her friend. And so we're just going to respect this boundaries and this, and, 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 and when you tell the person this boundary, it's not that you're not saying, I don't like you don't come next to me. You're just saying, Hey, listen, I have a comfort zone that I like, and it makes me feel good. And I like you. I'm not saying I don't like you. I'm saying I do like you, but you please respect this boundary that I have. Amen. It doesn't mean that I don't ever want to talk to you or that I don't, that you're not the kind of person that I want to be around. You're not saying that you're just saying, I have this condition, my, my own human condition that I know myself and I need this perimeter to be respected. And if you respect this, we can be great friends. Amen. And I'm going to look and see if you have a boundary because I'm going to respect your boundary now. Now I am aware of other people's boundaries because I have my own. Amen. Nobody ever taught us this. Right. And that's so empowering. And, and the easy thing is to just leave a friendship and just keep going on thinking it's never going to come up again, but it is, it's going to perpetually happen over and over because we're human beings. 
Right. And the thing is to not become a hermit and run away from everybody. That's not a solution because you know what? I tried doing that. (laughs) And let me tell you something. You can't escape people. It's inevitable. You're going to have to deal with people. And in order to live in a world with people, I mean, you could live in a world with just there's animals, but you know, as much as I love animals, you can't really talk and have a conversation with them. Right. Yeah. And, and my husband's nobody's an island, you know, so this is really just powerful. I'm so excited to listen to the rest. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, So we're going to continue and um, let me get my screen back up here. This probably be, if you're okay, this would be a good place to break for lunch and then come back because it's, um, we were scheduled for 1245. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yes. This being two presentations, right? Uh, yeah, but it, it probably might be over, but it's okay. If I don't get to finish, then um, that's fine. If you go over, it's okay. But I, um, but it's all one presentation that you split into two. That yeah, it's, exactly. Yes. So if you're at a good breaking point, if you feel good about the breaking point and gonna, you know, move to the next topic, then um, it would be good for we break for lunch. Yes. Yes, I'm good. Okay. Everybody else. Just thinking about those that are in all the different parts, time zones. <laughs> that was good. Okay. Um, you want to close in prayer? Table. You, um, can someone close in prayer for me, please? Lana, would you like to close in prayer? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh huh. I just wanted to say thank you. This is a wonderful study. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity that we have. Uh, we have resources that uh, that you train training us up to learn how to um, put together studies and. Uh, Thank you, Father, that uh, for the study that we have received and uh, that we may further um, understand your will and your um, understand your character, that we may become like you, Father. Oh, Heavenly Father, please bless each one of us and uh, help us to get together after the short break and bless Sister Victoria and the uh, and uh, help us, oh, Father, to retain and uh, to come back and organize ourselves in such a way that we may put together this kind of studies. Beautiful, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray and we thank you. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm.